Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to give you an update on my first planner fail of the year. And that fail is my home and garden planner. If you've been following my channel since the end of last year, you may or may not know that I boldly designated this Tomitaro Makano Hobonichi Weeks as my home and garden planner. And while I admitted in those videos that this was the area that I was least sure about, I was also really excited and hoping that getting this beautiful Hobonichi Weeks would motivate me to want to reach for it and update it and therefore use it more and help me create new behaviors around keeping our house clean and tidy and and taking our garden to the next level. Unfortunately, I'm here to come clean and admit that things did not go according to plan at all. I'm not entirely surprised and also I'm not too upset about it. I think it's good that I tried something and as we come to the end of Q1, I had wanted to do a reflection anyway to see how things went and I think there's a lot of learnings that came out of this whole experiment and reflection. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of those reflections and what my thoughts are with this book moving forward. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then please stick around. This one is going to be a bit more of a chatty video, so please feel free to grab a tea or a coffee or your favorite cozy beverage and settle in with a cozy activity of your choice, whether that is grabbing your planner or your journal, your latest knitting or crocheting project or whatever you want to do to keep me company as I talk you through my thoughts on this home and garden planner and what I'm thinking about doing with it moving forward. As for me, I've got my tea over here and I've shared this tea before on the channel, but it is the uh, winter edition chocolatey peppermint herbal tea. As you can see, it has been well enjoyed. I have one tea bag left and it actually started getting really cold in the last few days. We've had a very mild winter in Toronto and if you're a fan of snow it has been kind of a disappointing winter but the last few days it's gotten colder again. We've had a bit of snow and it, it feels like a nice way to end off this box of tea. I've really enjoyed it and I'll be looking out for this next winter to grab another box because I'm not sure if it'll be around all year round. And also before I begin, I just wanted to thank you for your comments on my last video. I had a lot of fun experimenting with a different style of video and it seems like there was some appetite for me to do videos like that again in the future. So if you're interested in that style of vloggy routine type content, let me know if there's anything else you'd be interested in seeing and I'd be happy to uh, see if I can film something like that again in the future. If you ever have any feedback or video ideas that you'd like to see from me, please share them in the comments. Okay, so we've kind of ripped off the band-aid and acknowledged that whatever plans I had for this book didn't quite pan out in the way that I wanted. And this isn't the first time, and it certainly won't be the last time, that I've set out to do something and failed at seeing it through. And in the past, when I've felt really convicted that I wanted to make a change in my life or that I wanted to do something, when I found myself unable to sustain that change, I used to feel a lot of disappointment because I would spend a lot of time thinking and planning and maybe some would even say over planning and that's okay. I clearly have a lot of thoughts and I've just grown to embrace that I have a lot of thoughts. So that's not really so much an area of shame for me as much as it used to be. But 
The idea of wanting to make a change and then not being able to do it is something that I think is an important one to reflect on. And it wasn't until I came across the stages of change model, or some may refer to it as the trans theoretical model, that helped me organize my thoughts and thinking around why certain things that I have decided that I want to change, I'm not able to make a meaningful change in my life or I'm not really able to keep that up. And there are about five stages of change. And those are pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. The stages of change model has been helpful for me to use as a framework because it's actually also called the trans theoretical model and the reason why is because the idea is that it can apply to a person's behavior regardless of how you're thinking about behavioral change so in some of my other videos i talked about acceptance and commitment therapy as a way to like work through difficult situations and in that theory there is some behavioral change that is happening in theory like you're you know committing to different actions that you might be changing moving forward to improve your situation if you've determined that there's a problem and so this isn't necessarily instead of that this is something that can be applied regardless of the way that you're thinking about trying to make a change so i find that really helpful as an overarching framework of approaching a problem if you've identified that you have a problem and the other thing is that while it's kind of presented as a very linear there's this stage and then the next one and the next one and the next one Um, It's important to keep in mind that it's not necessarily linear in that you might start in a few different stages and then you might actually find yourself moving backwards and then forwards and backwards. So each stage, there is a subsequent order to the stages, but it's not that once you're at the next one, you can never kind of go backwards. I thought it would be helpful to go through it with my home and garden planner to help me understand like what's going on here that hasn't been quite as successful as the meal planning. So I would describe the pre-contemplation stage as the baseline stage where or the state that we were in before I decided to do something about it. We were keeping the house clean, we were finding time to do all the basic chores that we needed to do, like the dishes, the bathroom, the floors, that kind of thing. And it was happening around our schedule, so we weren't necessarily designating a specific time to do those things, but we were recognizing that they needed to happen. And then when it came to our garden, each year it has always been a little bit of a panic, like, oh, it's getting warmer outside, oh, I think we should maybe plant something and each year we get a little bit better at starting earlier so last year was the first year that we successfully germinated seeds that survived the indoors and actually grew into something that we could harvest and so we really wanted to level up our garden for 2024 and then I would describe the contemplation as since it felt like we were really doing a lot of these things reactively or impulsively and it always felt like we were behind on our chores i felt like it was a problem in that similar to the meal planning it was adding a lot of like unnecessary stress on us because it always felt like the cleaning chores were an afterthought it also felt like we weren't maximizing our garden and we felt like there was this missed opportunity that we weren't growing as much as we could grow in our garden and that the problem was that we were disorganized and if we were better organized and did some more upfront planning then we wouldn't have this this problem and i really felt like a lot of the stress i was feeling was because we just didn't have a plan of how to approach these things we didn't really know what to do, so we didn't know how to plan for doing them. So that led me to this like preparation stage where 
I got this really beautiful Hobonichi Weeks and I went through this exercise which was very similar to the one that I did for the health and wellness planner where I identified goals, potential barriers, and I even came up with some strategies for how we could help determine what chores needed to be done in the first place so that I could use this information to start planning for the subsequent months in the year. So the more I tracked, the more information I would have to make informed decisions later on in the year. And so to make things easy for myself, I started off by just writing down all the different tasks that we were doing throughout the week. Instead of saying, we're just going to clean the toilets on Saturday, we were instead noting down when we found the time to do it so that we would know, okay, if we did this task on this day, then we should probably do it around the same time next week, that kind of thing. And it was getting noted down in this chores log so I could track it over a period of time. Yeah, so that led to coming up with this chores log and instead of over committing myself to trying to come up with every possible thing that we needed to do in our home, I felt like this was a relaxed approach to slowly figuring things out and I had planned to treat the first few months as a discovery phase where we would just treat it as learning. What are we doing? How often are we doing it? What are some other things that came up that we didn't anticipate coming up that we could then apply to this? So action stage, I set up my planner. I started writing down all of the things that we were doing. I didn't worry too much about decorating the pages or trying to be too fancy. I tried to keep it as minimal as possible to limit the barrier for me opening this up and using it in the first place. I just wanted it to be like a very simple place to go to. There was a sense of satisfaction in filling this out and Mike really tried to get on board with this and he would tell me when he did things because he knew that I was trying to record these things down and log them and then I also said we'll figure out the garden stuff in February and start planning that for March April so that was the plan and that was the action as you can see that completely fell off by January I pretty much stopped using the book so what happened? It turns out I didn't really want to reference another planner when it came to these chores. My cousin and my TN currently hold all of my weekly tasks and my daily tasks. And I thought that it made sense to keep the house chores and the gardening stuff separate because that is how I have approached my meal planning and my health and wellness. I've kept them very contained and it's been working really well for me. This because I can take this to the grocery store so it's also my grocery list and because all of the things that have to do with meal planning happen in the kitchen. So this makes sense to stay contained. And then this makes sense for me because a lot of these things I'm tracking, they only impact me because it's my health and wellness and it's kept together because it's a tool that I'm also using for regular reflection when I'm checking in on how I'm doing. So that's working as a standalone. But when it comes to like home and garden chores, these tasks, if I'm even trying to assign myself to them or remind myself to do them, it makes more sense to live with my to-do list or maybe even in a weekly view on my cousin. So I've even thought like, would it make more sense to put tasks on the sidebar here because this is a book that I have open throughout the day on my desk or even does it make sense to put it in here because I also have this open where I have my tasks that I want to do for the day. I think when it comes to chores it's more of like a when I have time to do it throughout the week I'll get it done which leads me to feel like it might make more sense in a weekly view as opposed to my daily to-do where I'm writing down all the things that have to happen that day. So I didn't want to reference another planner to do these things. And I was also giving myself extra work that I 
just didn't have the time or motivation for. So I thought maybe if I treated home chores like it was a job, that I would take it more seriously and I would be a little more structured in how I was approaching it. So in some ways, I almost think of meal planning as like a little mini job where there are things that need to happen to sort of keep it running and to maintain it, which is why, again, I think it worked really well in a separate book. But it turns out I have way too many jobs right now and creating a new one, especially for things that I don't enjoy doing, made me feel even more stretched for time. So I think it works a lot better for me to keep in mind some chores I need to do and to get them done when I remember. So if I feel like I need the reminder using my cousin or my traveler's notebook. But when it came to using this book, I was overthinking it. I thought creating structure for myself would eliminate decision fatigue that I was having around doing house chores. But a few months into the year, I've realized a lot of the chores that need to happen on a regular basis are a lot more routine that I was giving myself credit for. And honestly, we've been doing a pretty good job of maintaining our home. And I feel like maybe I was being a bit too hard on us and maybe the perfectionist in me had some kind of idea of what it means to do all the chores that need to happen in order to have like a successful home. But we were actually doing pretty well. And I feel like I created this book and this whole system because I felt like I was doing it wrong somehow and I don't really feel that way anymore. And I think the last and most important thing is that I don't think I was focusing on the actual problem. And this is why I think that instead of the problem lying in the preparation or the action, so it wasn't so much like I didn't commit or plan properly or I, I didn't take enough action, or I didn't like try hard enough to engage in new behaviors or overcome obstacles. I think it was more that I thought my problem was that I was feeling stressed out about the fact that we didn't have this like well-maintained home and we didn't have a good plan. And that was because we didn't know what to do. So I thought our lack of organization was causing the stress because that was the case for meal planning. So once we got ourselves organized and we started planning our meals in advance, a lot of the stress that we had melted away. So in that case, I was focusing on the actual problem and then the solutions and the behaviors that I was coming up with and the actions were directly addressing that problem. In this case, we are kind of doing what we need to do and a lot of these things that I was stressing about, you know, making sure that we're changing the hand towels or changing our like bed sheets regularly, all of that isn't really something that I feel needs to be logged. If anything, like we don't have to dedicate a whole day on Saturday to change the towels or to change the bed sheets. So it's not really something that is worth my time logging because we're doing it and I don't know that we need to overthink it. I realized with the real source of our stress when it comes to our home, at least for me, and I, I think Mike would agree, is the fact that our home is actually very cluttered and it is disorganized and that makes it feel really messy and dirty. So in reality, our house is like clean, but our house isn't tidy. I think I'm the majority of the problem because I have a lot of hobbies, have a lot of stuff, and I would rather be engaging in my hobbies and doing fun things than I would be tidying up our home and putting away all the things that I pull out when I'm engaging in my hobbies. And I've realized that having a cluttered space does actually stress me out. And I think that is why I've started to be a bit more discerning about my hobbies. And I've tried to be a lot more careful about how I engage with them and what I'm bringing into our home because it feels like things are bursting at the seams and I think that is actually causing a lot of stress for both of us. I think I was actually kind of stuck in that contemplation stage because I knew there needed to be a change 
but I was uncertain about what actions to take. And that's because I didn't really know what the problem was. I had weighed the pros and cons of making this change of creating a cleaning schedule, but I think the real problem was actually this cluttered environment that was translating into feeling cluttered in our minds. So that leads me to what does that mean for this book moving forward? And I'm going to be honest, I'm probably still in the contemplation stage with this book. I'm feeling a little uncertain about how I want to move forward with it. And if I'm being completely honest, I probably didn't need to get this book in the first place. And I think that is a really good learning and takeaway for me for next year. I have contemplated completely abandoning it. That feels crappy. I did spend a lot of money on this and I just wasn't sure what to do with it. You know, as we get to the end of Q1, that's the perfect time to do a bit of a reflection and see like what's working and what's not working out so well. I don't want to create another use for it, but I don't want to force myself to use it in this way because that was adding more stress and not enough value for me to continue with this. For now, I've been experimenting with using this as like a catch-all place for home project inspiration. It's another hobby of mine is updating our home and decorating it. I just have not had the time, but what I have had the time to do is look for inspiration for the different rooms in our home. So what I have been doing instead, and I'll show you, is I've been printing out photos that speak to me and I've just been using the unused weekly pages to reflect on what it is I really like about these photos, what is standing out to me, and hopefully I can come away with some themes that I can think about as we decorate our home because I think it's a good place to figure out what do I actually like because I like a lot of things and if you see some of the photos that I'm pulling they all have kind of different styles and so it's important to be able to reflect on like what it is about each of these is drawing me in and it turns out I've been having a lot of fun with this like you know the Hobonichi Weeks is a pretty thin book to begin with so I'm less afraid of bulking this up and I have a lot of sticker paper. I have the glossy sticker paper and then I have regular matte sticker paper. So this is an interior by Sebastian Bergstrom and I had been like pinning these photos for so long, even though it's a very different style from our home. I really wanted to reflect on what it is I love so much about it. And I think it's the pops of color. I love this tomato red. And I love how there's a cohesiveness to it, but each of the rooms aren't necessarily all one color. I have some inspiration for blue rooms because I already purchased blue paint for our primary bathroom. And I, aside from having picked the paint color, I feel very lost as to how to decorate it. So I have also in the back, I've started thinking like mood board for the bathroom. So I've started putting together some ideas and some color schemes and things like that, that inspire me. I have a video on my channel where I painted our bedroom this really gorgeous yellow ochre or this mustard yellow and I still absolutely love the color. Getting through the winter with all those gray days, having that yellow room has been such a mood boost because even when there's a little bit of light, it just makes the room feel like it's glowing and I, I love it. But our walls are still completely bare and I don't know how to decorate them. So I've just been pinning different photos that have a similar color to my wall and, you know, trying to take note of what I really like about each of the photos. There's a few more here. I love wallpaper so much, but I can't afford wallpaper. So trying to draw some inspiration, either like potential future stenciling ideas or really maximal rooms that speak to me even if the style and the color scheme isn't exactly what I like. Just trying to understand like what it is about each of these. 
living room is another area that I'm unsure about. I painted the walls um, setting plaster, I think almost two years ago now, and I love it. It's a very soothing color for a room that we spend a lot of our downtime in, but I've been stumped as to how to decorate around that color. I've tried three different types of curtains and none of them have felt right. Obviously, I, I think I've talked about this on my channel before, but we have this big gray couch that I don't love, but we can't afford to just get a new couch. So I've just been trying to see what other elements of the room might help me work with the couch as opposed to trying to get rid of it. And then this is the big learning for me is that I love green rooms, but I don't have a solid idea of what it is exactly about green that I love. You can see there's all these different shades of green. They're all different styles. And I wouldn't say there's anything about each of these that I love a lot. So this has been interesting for me because I need to do a little more green room inspo searching. So that's how I've been using up the weekly pages. We have talked about germinating some seeds in the next week or so to see if any of them will survive being transplanted into our garden. And we've also talked about having another year of picking up some seedlings and not trying to be so perfect about starting all of our veggies from seed because we're not experienced and we also don't really have the time to do a ton of research into it. I know we have the motivation to do it, but I just don't think now in our lives is the right time to do it. So, so be it. If we end up with a lot of seedlings or if we end up not really growing too much in our garden this year, that's okay too. And then in terms of the back, so I did start this home project log. I wanted to have a place to jot down all the things that I wanted to do with estimated uh, effort levels. Most of these things on this list are still true. So especially because now I feel more strongly that the problem is the cluttered space. So aside from some of these inspo photos, we've been prioritizing adding more storage in our home. So this was a closet shelf project, which is actually done and it was a project that was focused on maximizing our bedroom closet so we could use more of it for storage and it actually turned out really well so this was such a success and the next project that we're focusing on is adding some shelving in our office so I really want to do wall shelving by our doors. If this is stuff that is interesting to you, let me know because I'm probably going to start working on these things in the next month or so. So I don't know if this kind of content is interesting for you, but let me know. That is all I have so far with this Hobonichi week. So it's not really, I guess it's kind of changed from like more of a planning tool to more of a catch-all reflection workbook. I may start using it more when we have like at, it, throughout the summer months if we do build up our garden or I may not. It feels better to be using it than to be fully abandoning it but do I need a Hobonichi weeks to do this kind of reflection? Absolutely not. I could be doing this in just a regular notebook. So if I didn't have this book, I don't think I would be using this book in this way, but I'm glad for now to have found a use for it. And it is kind of fun to have a place to see things that have been inspiring me because there's no shortage of like home interior inspiration out there. But I think being able to distill it down and really reflect on what is speaking to you and what really inspires you for your home, I think is a lot more pleasant to do on paper. At least it is for me. If you have any other ideas on how I could use this book since I already invested in it and want to find a way to use it, I would love to hear your ideas in the comments. I'd also be curious to hear your thoughts about the stages of change and whether you found that framework helpful for you. Personally, it was really eye-opening for me to think about my actions within this framework and it was helpful to realize that I may have been stuck in that contemplation stage for a while or 
perhaps I had just never left it. And that's okay. Recognizing where I am in the process or what stage I might be in has helped me understand why I've been struggling to make this change in my life. And it's really given me a chance to take a step back and reflect and consider different approaches. So this planner might seem like a really simplistic application of it, but I am starting to think about other areas of my life where I've been trying to make changes but have struggled and I think it's just a really nice way to reflect like where am I in this moment and is this really where I am or do I need to take a step back the next time I tackle a new goal or make a change I'm going to keep the stages of change in mind and I see it as like having a roadmap to helping me plan better and also understand what could be holding me back in order to unblock myself so I can move forward so have you, have you heard about the stages of change before? And what are your thoughts about using something like this as a way to better understand situations where you have been stuck and you haven't been able to make the changes that you want to make in your life? Let me know in the comments below. If you're still here after that long video, thank you so much for sticking around until the end. I appreciate you so much. I hope you're doing well and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.